Mahoney is the best receiver on their team. It just didn't seem like a guy that was going to be a culture fit for Joe Shane and Brian Dable. Somebody had to spend a first-round draft pick. They get it for a conditional third. This should be Chris Paul not being able to go to the Lakers. Dream, 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 Keyshawn, J. Will and Max, ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, ESPN2. We're presented by Progressive Insurance. You can give us a call on the Dr. Pepper call in line, 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. So here's the big trade from yesterday, Jay. Kind of came out of nowhere. The Kansas City Chiefs trade a conditional third, which I suppose means it's a fourth now, and if he hits certain things, it becomes a third, right? Mm -hmm. And a sixth rounder in the draft to the Giants for wide receiver Kadarius Toney, who was a top 20 pick a couple years ago. A little injury prone, though. Had some issues with our Giants. And you heard reports on our air out of training camp and stuff like he's always last in line. They didn't like his the way he was getting after mm-hmm. things, so he's injury prone. The coaches clearly didn't like some other stuff about him. It's it's out, at least the reports were. Is it the and, left hand hamstring? Is it the right one? You don't want to go on a trip to London. Which one is it? But the dude is extremely talented. And while on the Giants, he oh maybe he could be a spe- on the Chiefs. All he's got to be is a matchup problem. Another matchup problem. On the offense. So you have McCole Hardman. He's, oh, when is he going to turn a corner? He is what he is. But he's still a fast dude, right? Marquez Valdez-Scantling. He is not a number one, but he is a take-the-lid-off-the-defense kind of guy. He can get behind your defense. A fast dude. Kelsey's number one. Kelsey's, hey, Kelsey's the number Kelsey's one. Kelsey's the number one you guy. You got Juju Smith-Schuster, too. So, so, you have, so you have Kelsey, who's, who's your, as Key would define it, your alpha receiver because you run the passing game through him. But now, everywhere you look, there is a fast matchup problem on the field so they get a top 20 pick essentially for a third and a six that works for the Chiefs and it could be a tipping point in their offense it just makes it that much more difficult the Giants get rid of a guy they weren't going to use anyway and get some extra draft capital I think it's a win-win I, I like the move I mean I, I I know yesterday when when it went down I, I was like okay like that's that's a luxury that's an added on bonus to a, a team that it feels like Look, if you want the vertical stretch game to open up a little bit, he can provide that, right? Just having him on the field gives it that option to do a lot, a lot Got of other account things. Account for him, right? Like you, you can throw screens to it, jet sweeps. You can do all these different things. You can. I I trust Eric Bieniemy and Andy Reid to implement him into the system where you're not asking him. Well, if to, it works, it's Andy Reid. But if it doesn't work, not, not Eric, on this show. Then it's Eric if Bien-Aimé. it works, it's Eric Bieniemy on I this see. show. I see. Yeah, James already yelled at me about that earlier. But like, I'll tell you what. So that move happening, it just. It brought me back to a different point, though, yesterday when it went down. I'm like, okay, Robbie Anderson now, Kadarius Tony, they've been traded for cheap prices, it feels like. You, you got that going on, right? Like, okay. you're also thinking about, okay, like Robert Quinn was moved from Chicago. They're letting go of pieces. Like, that's another addition to a championship like team. What the hell is Green Bay doing? Okay, wait, before what we is, get to Green Bay, what is Green Bay doing? You Are and we- I have talked about Kadarius Tony, and I really do think he is. He's not when 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 you have a really talented player who's expected to be one thing. I think of even like a very different personality and work ethic and all this kind of stuff. But Andre Iguodala on the Sixers, he's not the number one scorer on a championship team. They were kind of trying to so cast back him back when way. he was like AI, way back, Iggy. Yeah, way back when he was like okay, right. leading the team in scoring. But like yeah, but when Iguodala is just needs to do his part on a team, then it's like unfair. Like wait, with Golden got, State. Yeah. It would, wait, he's just got to play defense and be the fourth scorer or fifth option? Oh, my God. That's Kadarius Tony to me. It sounds like that's how you're thinking of him, yep. too, on the Chiefs. However, Bart Scott on Barton Hahn has a different thought about what Tony could mean on this Chiefs offense. Kadarius Tony is the best receiver on their team right now. On the Chiefs. Right now. Instantly, be, a, a better, guy that, than, better than Harmon. A guy that has done literally nothing at the NFL level, and now he's the best. Better than Harmon. Better than Juju, better than better than Valdez Scanley. This dude's a problem, man. This dude is so talented, it's ridiculous. And they just get a player like that that somebody had to spend a first round draft pick. Do they you, get it for a conditional third. Do you think that we need to boycott? This should be Chris Paul not being able to go to the Lakers. I, I have I have no doubt in Bart's ability to see talent. I mean, I, I watched Kadarius Tony when he was at Florida. Super talented dude. <laughs> I just don't always know if there is discipline for that talent to translate 
onto the field. I mean, I think – Right, like there are a lot of question marks around – the character now that could be how is the Brian Dable situation panned out? He didn't how draft him. Yep, how he handled it, um, and you know maybe Andy Reid can't or Eric, Eric, Eric Bieniemy can be that guy to open up that war chest for him, but the history doesn't prove that for me in the short sample size. One of the things that you do when you look at the Giants draft, the way they take Wandell for, they kind of got a guy like that who's even a little more ex- like explosive and stronger. In Kadarius Tony, that's weird. Well, that administration, the you know Joe Shane, Brian Dable didn't draft Kadarius Tony. So then you start looking at that, and they like Wandell. Then you see Kadarius. Then you hear reports over the summer. Kadarius Tony, they don't love him in training camp. The media thinks he's not looking like he's getting after it. This and that. Plus, he's injury prone, right? So you start to read into that, mm-hmm. and then he falls out of favor. He's not on the field that much. I, I, so I think it is fair for you to make certain assumptions, Jay. Like, it looks like maybe he doesn't have what it takes so far to be a number one. But Bart sees number one type receiver talent there. And remember when he was drafted, he's almost like one of these hybrid receiver back types. Like, you can carry the ball. That's why I said like. there's a lot of upside. You got him for cheap. You see the potential. Then, like, implement him and let him figure it out. If he doesn't figure it out, it doesn't hurt you overall for the move. Well, between Reed and Bienemy and Mahomes, I think they're going to— I trust in that. Whatever, whatever's in there, we're going to find out what, what the upside is because they're about— they got, I just think I don't think of him as a number one. I think of him as a weapon. Like, we had a Weapon piece. X. We had Brian Dawkins on the de- from the defense of the Eagle safety back in the day. And, you know, that's how I think of Kadarius Tony, like a weapon— not like Dawkins, but like a weapon X. This is a guy who can kind of do some stuff for you so, that's hard to account for. I know, by the way, I know things didn't work out off the field. Remember Dave Meggett back in the day on the Giants? It was like, boy, he could do a lot, a lot for you. He, so he's a weapon with the upside of potentially having the talent to be a number one. Right. I, I, liked, I like that. But it does bring me back to my question once again. I've seen a lot of teams make moves for the cheap. Robbie Anderson, Kadarius Tony. Robert Quinn, what the hell are the Green Bay Packers doing? We talk about their offense struggling to a degree. Aaron Rodgers not really finding his way. We're seeing these additional pieces being added on to other teammates. Like Gutekinds, we've heard Aaron Rodgers talk about this multiple times. Oh, you know, I I trust in Gutekinds. I have faith that he will make the right move. They have yet to make any moves. Yeah, especially, look, you saw it in the offseason. This always happens in the NFL, and I brought this up. Again, as a Giants fan with offensive line problems, I saw Shaq Mason was traded to the Bucks for a fifth-round pick. And I thought, well, okay, stop right there, everyone. I don't want to hear how hard it is to fix an offensive line. guy like Shaq Mason's available for a fifth-round pick. You get Robert Quinn moved, as you mentioned. You get, when you, it's always easy to look at those kind of moves and say, what is this team doing? They're standing pat, right? And, and, but the Packers' track record in terms of that stuff, has been pretty good recently. Being able to get to the playoffs every year. The question is, but never get, what do they get do to the right, get over the hump? The Chiefs advance in the playoffs every year, and here's a move that I think will result in them advancing probably farther than they would have otherwise. Well, the issues came from the track record that they would try to draft talent and build talent over time instead of going out and getting those dominant wide receivers or people to help You know, Aaron Rodgers truly get there. is the best receiver on their team. It just didn't seem like a guy that was going to be a culture fit for Joe Shane and Brian Dable. Somebody had to spend a first-round draft pick making it for a conditional third. This should be Chris Paul not being able to go to the Lakers. Keyshawn, J. Will and Max, ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, ESPN2. We're presented by Progressive Insurance. You can give us a call on the Dr. Pepper call in line, 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. So here's the big trade from yesterday, Jay. Kind of came out of nowhere. The Kansas City Chiefs trade a conditional third which I suppose means it's a fourth now, and if he hits certain things, it becomes a third, right? Mm -hmm. And a sixth rounder in the draft to the Giants for wide receiver Kadarius Toney, who was a top 20 pick a couple years ago. A little injury prone, though. Had some issues with our Giants. And you heard reports on our air out of training camp and stuff like he's always last in line. They didn't like his the way he was getting after Mm -hmm. things, so he's injury prone. The coaches clearly didn't like some other stuff about him. 
It's it's at least the reports were. Is it the and, left hand drink, hamstring? Is it the right one? You don't want to go on a trip to London. Which one is it? But the dude is extremely talented. And while on the Giants, he oh maybe he could be a spe- on the Chiefs. All he's got to be is a matchup problem. Another matchup problem on the offense. So you have McCole Hardman. He's oh when is he going to turn a corner? He is what he is. But he's still a fast dude, right? Marquez Valdez Scantling. He is not a number one, but he is a take the lid off the defense kind of guy. Can get behind your defense. A fast dude. Kelsey's number one. Kelsey's the Kelsey's number, number one. Kelsey's the number one guy. Juju Smith-Schuster too. So, so you have, so you have Kelsey, who's who's your as Key would define it, your alpha receiver because you run the passing game through him. But now. 